Today on Houston Life, we're commemorating Juneteenth as we tour the grounds of Emancipation Park and learn more about the history of this holiday. And a closer look at how a team of HEB partners worked together to bring a very special Juneteenth chalk mural to life. Plus, meet the powerhouse playwright and performer who's seeking to heal and educate through her work. And fresh from her win on the Food Network's The Great Food Truck Race Alaska, Chef Dambria Jacobs shows us an easy recipe you can serve at your Juneteenth celebration. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Houston Life. It's Thursday, June 17th. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everyone. I am Derek Shore. So glad to have you with us today from one of what I think is the most beautiful spot in the city. We are here at Emancipation Park, right at Emancipation Ave and Elgin, and the backdrop of downtown behind us is beautiful. This is uh, personally special for me because I lived in this neighborhood for three years, and this park is not just a beautiful uh, gathering place for so many families in the city, but it also has such incredible history. It really does, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to walk you through the history of this park. I had to just digress just a little bit because walking up here, you know, it's summertime, right? So this park, as we say, parks are typically in neighborhoods because they're a gathering point. It's summer, y'all. We know it's hot, okay? We just deal with it. We're Houstonians. We get out. There's AC when we get back home, right? Um, but when I walked up here today around noon, there were two guys and a trainer running sprints back and forth in this field right behind me. In this building right to, to our left, there's a day camp with a bunch of kids playing basketball. There's the gym, state-of-the-art gym that's here. There's conferences going on in this building. I mean, this is the park and the place to be in the city. It yeah. is really unbelievable when you think about the history and where this park came from and how it's evolved over the years. And I think if you don't know the history, I think it's easy to pass by and say exactly what it's you just said. It's a state-of-the-art park, right? I mean, it's beautiful. I was here four years ago for the grand reopening. This park underwent a $34 million renovation. There's public art, monuments. You've got the pool, the baseball diamonds, basketball courts, tennis uh, yeah. courts, and the history of of the park is incredible because technically Emancipation Park is the oldest park in the city of Houston purchased by four slaves back in the 1800s right after the Emancipation Proclamation what do they pay for it? A thousand dollars? Eight hundred dollars? Eight hundred dollars. And uh, it's ten acres, and it has come so far. And we're only going to scratch the surface today over the next hour, but we have some incredible guests lined up. You won't believe the stories we have. For you I know. Today. I was just going to say, I'm so glad you said stories because the storytelling that's coming out throughout the next hour from history, playwrights to food, it's all coming together. This is what the beauty of Houston life is, and really what the beauty of Houston, our city, is because we are diving into basically a chapter in our book that really needs to be celebrated today. Well, I recommend, too, a walking tour. You've got the El Dorado Ballroom that's right across Elgin Such from this history. park. Maybe you save the walking tour for, you know, the fall. Um, <laughs> but get on down to Emancipation Park because, again, there is such incredible history, and it's also a beautiful place to make new memories. Absolutely, and meet some new people as well. So buckle up. It's going to be tons of fun here for the next hour in Houston life. And, of course, Joe Sam. Lauren Kelly's here, too. Don't worry. She's got some great food coming up. But Joe Sam is also here at Emancipation Park with a piece of his history. And Joe, I know you're going to walk us around this beautiful park. It really is. We're going to be taking you around the park and showing you all the great things that you can come and experience. Right now, we're pretty much at the entrance of the park at the historical marker to talk all about that and how you can come and experience this history yourself here. Such a significant history, rich history here in Houston. I'm here with the executive director, Lucy, to talk about this historical marker that we have here because it and that's why we're here to celebrate it here at Emancipation Park. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this beautiful location. It's the historic Emancipation Park that was founded in 1872 by four young men right out of slavery. And this is a historical landmark of this beautiful 10 acres. And it was granted to the Emancipation Park in 2008 wow. by the Texas Historical Commission. This is something that's really great because before people can even go and experience the park themselves and explore all that you have to offer, 
offer. They learned a lot just from reading this historical marker. But then there are so many different facilities around this location here that people can enjoy and check out. We're going to be doing that today, seeing some great things that people can come and see here for themselves. I've seen people walking out of the athletic center. There's a lot of great things happening here. A lot of great things happening here. This is just like any other park. We have a baseball field. We have basketball. We have swimming. We have a gym. But it's historic. It's the only park that was uh, all African Americans were allowed to visit back in the day. Yes. It is the first and the oldest park in the city of Houston. Absolutely. And then we have a little bit more history that we want to send out there for people because it cost how much? Just hundreds of dollars. Eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred Ten acres of land. Eight hundred dollars. And look at where it's become. Look at where it is now today, which brings a smile to all of our faces Absolutely. here because it has so much rich culture, history, and tradition. We come here and celebrate every single year, and we're going to continue doing that this June 19th as we celebrate Juneteenth. We're going to get ready to send things back to Courtney and Derek right now, but Lucy, don't go anywhere because we're going to be taking you guys on a few places around the park. There's so much to see, but we're going to take you to just a few Courtney and Derek to show you how great this park is. I love it. Can't wait to see what the next stop is. Yeah, just time, just a, a good time ahead of Juneteenth. About to be an official holiday. Yes. The president expected to sign that bill any moment. All right, Joe, see you in just a bit. Well, we do want to hear from you. Send a shout out to a black owned business in Houston you'd like us to recognize. Join the conversation on our Houston Life Facebook page. We will be sharing some of your comments, as always, a little later on in today's show. All right, after the break, we are exploring the history of Emancipation Park and learning more about how the Emancipation Park Conservancy is commemorating Juneteenth. More of Houston Life when we come back. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. So did you know Emancipation Park is the oldest park in the city of Houston? I learned something new today, though. It is also officially the oldest park in the state of Texas. We have some fantastic guests who are just making their way to our stage right now. You're about to meet them. And uh, one of them is actually the great granddaughter of one of the original purchasers of Emancipation Park, Jackie Bostick and Connie Griffin with Shell. They are making their way onto the stage now, and we will welcome them. Ladies, come on in. It's so nice to see you. I believe we're going to get a microphone on you in just one moment. It is nice to see you both. Thank you so much, Courtney. Jackie, if you could sit down right here, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Emancipation Park, we're currently seeing some video of this beautiful, beautiful place. Connie Griffin and Jackie Bostick joining us now on set. And what an incredible gathering place for so many people. Connie, we're going to get to your story in just a moment because Shell is deeply committed. They've actually partnered up with the Emancipation Park Conservancy this year. But Jackie, I want to start with you because you have a deeply personal connection to this park. Tell us about your great grandfather. Well, my great-grandfather, who was Reverend Jack Yates, was one of the founders of the park. And uh, these 10 acres were bought so that people from the community could have a place to go to and have family gatherings, community gatherings, and celebrate their freedom on Juneteenth. Today, you are vice chairwoman of the Emancipation Park Conservancy. And describe to us just how critical the role of the Conservancy is, because a beautiful park like this takes a lot of time and money to maintain, right? Yes, and so the Conservancy is here to make sure that there are necessary funds, that the park is kept up, that the programs continue, that the neighborhood and the people of Houston and all around the world have a place to come to and celebrate freedom. And what a beautiful place to come to. Connie, I am going to pass the microphone over to you so I don't reach around. There you go. So Connie Griffin, you are digital project manager with Shell. And let's talk a little bit about this partnership because Shell is so committed to so many different causes and organizations. Can you just sort of give us an idea of the broad scope of, of the things you are involved in? Well, thank you so much, Derek. Yes, um, as a, the digital product manager at Shell, but also as the national president of our Shell Black Network Group, we've really been committed along 
with Shell to be partners in our communities that we operate. So we support not only the Emancipation Park um, con con um, Conserv Conservancy, but we also support uh, the programs such as the United Negro College Fund in the area where we raised $113,000 this year, I mean in 2020 for scholarships. We also support our MLK Day of Service where we uh, uh, raised 6,000 pounds of food for the community, in addition to other programs it, with schools and then the backpack program with uh, Houston. So we're really committed not only to support the community efforts, but also developing that pipeline of talent, black talent, to fill Shell's walls with people who can really represent our community. So we're really proud to partner with the Emancipation Park Conservancy, but also with the Houston community at large. Also, what's really incredible, and we spoke a little bit about about this earlier, a lot of large corporations, they would choose to just perhaps write a check, right? At Shell, things are a little bit different because you are supporting these causes like the Conservancy monetarily, but you are also getting your employees, getting your teams out there on the ground doing the hard work. That's what's really important, being present, right? So I think not only um, giving money, but also role modeling the behavior that we want to do to support the community is important to us. So we realize a lot of our black students need to see themselves in the future, whether it's in technology jobs or not. So we really work hard on showing up and being present in our community activities, showing up and being present at our backpack events so they can see the different careers that's available in our industry and really look at Shell as an employer of choice in their future endeavors. One of the ways you're getting on the ground is through a meal distribution happening this Saturday. Tell us about that. People have to register in advance, correct? Yeah, so we're, as, as we said before, we're really committed to supporting this program, not only from the series that we sponsor monetarily, but also being there to hand out um, and support food distribution, um, not only today, but in the other programs we have. So we really look forward to people coming out and supporting that effort. We have um, more than 17 so volunteers at least for Shell to support on that day and so we're really proud to partner with the, the Conservancy and on continuing bringing uh, community activities and, and supporting with uh, food banks and other activities throughout the year. Connie, I'll grab that mic back from you because I have a few more questions for you, Jackie. What do you make of how beautiful this park is today? Because uh, you've been a resident of Houston for a long, long time, and to see people coming from all over the place to gather here must be quite a feeling. It's wonderful to realize that uh, we are celebrating our 149th anniversary this year, and next year we will have been here 150 years. And it's wonderful to see that even today that the community still supports the park and that people can still come and take advantage of the different programs and activities at the park. And I want to say we were very appreciative of Shell because they have truly been a partner with us. And it's not only important that the children and young people get an opportunity to see what they contribute, but it's important that the community understands that Shell is a part of this community and that they are coming forth and working with the community. So we look forward to Saturday when they will be here helping us distribute food to those people who have signed up for the community activities we will be having. It's fantastic, and we are out of time, but I do just want to quickly get your thoughts on this bill the president is about to sign. Congress, of course, passed it, marking Juneteenth as an official federal holiday. I think it's fantastic. It's long overdue, and so we are happy that everybody will now understand what Juneteenth is really all about, the freedom of all slaves in the United States. Amen. Jackie, Connie, thank you so much, and thanks to Shell and the Emancipation Park Conservancy. If you would like to learn more about the Conservancy or to watch some pretty incredible videos, uh, you can visit the Emancipation Park Conservancy Facebook page or visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Thanks again, ladies. Thank you. All right, now we're going to send things over to Mr. Joe Sam, hanging out of the park. Hey, Joe.
Thanks, Derek, for that. Yeah, before you saw us at the front of the park where you will find the aquatic, the fitness and culture center. Now we move to the back where you'll see the picnic pavilion, which is what they call the front porch. I have Lucy here with me again to talk more about that. We see the front porch right now. You said they have rocking chairs out there where you can really just enjoy your time with your family, watch the kids play at the area here. Talk a little bit more about that. This was traditionally the picnic area. We named it the front porch when Phil Freeland, the same guy who designed the African American Museum in Washington, D.C., wow. designed it. And it's an opportunity for you to go, come and sit on the porch, yeah. kind of like they did in the day, and watch your kids play baseball, watch them in the kids' playground, or even watch them, you know, just play through the park. And that's the significance of calling it the front porch because it it, it, it has a parallelism among the front porch that mm -hmm. we remember back in the day. We really do. I used to remember my grandmother sitting on her front porch yes. watching us play around in the yard. And then something else that's really, really beautiful here is this amazing structure that we have, which is what we call the arches. Talk about that there. The arches. It represents freedom. If you look at it, the hands are going up. And the idea of what Freel Freelon had at the time was to make sure that people understood the hopes and the dreams of the slaves back then, the hopes and the dreams of people who were freely uh, emancipated, that there's some words on that arch yes. that kind of simulates it. It, it, it. What it does is to give people, um, you know, just guidance and help them think that there is a possibility that things anything can happen and those words that you're talking about you can see them under there they say liberation opportunity creativity and release we know that it's been such a release because we've been building all of that in just from what we've experienced through slavery and now we can finally release that out and show our freedom show our happiness our pride our culture and traditions which has all been found here in the park there's been so many different events that you've had here at the park to represent black justice black freedom when we all seen the, the it's situations that we had with the police and the community. They had those beautiful monuments here of all of the people that we've seen lost. Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, yes, yes. Trayvon Martin. It was such a beautiful yes. event to have that happen here in the park. So the, the actual name of these art is called We Rise Up. And we took advantage of that for our virtual Juneteenth celebration this year. Our final episode of virtual environment is called uh, Rise. Wow. You know, We Rise Up. So, you know, that song that everybody's singing. And so, rise yes, up. Yeah, Rise Up. <laughs> You'll be singing that song on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Make sure to tune in for our virtual final virtual celebration of our 149 Juneteenth celebration. Lucy, this is going to be absolutely wonderful. I cannot tell you guys how excited it is to be here at this park. I run around here every single morning, and this is something great to see everybody enjoying themselves. We see a lot of people already out enjoying themselves. And Courtney and Derek, this is going to be so incredible for us to continue talking about this here. Lauren, I hear you have some great things going on out there as far as food is concerned. I sure do, Joe. I know that's one of your favorites. Coming up, we are showing you guys how Black Restaurant Week is helping local restaurants who are still recovering from the pandemic and how you can support them, plus a mocktail inspired by Harriet Tubman. That is when Houston Life returns. All right, you guys, Black Restaurant Week continues to support Black-owned culinary businesses, and I am super excited to continue talking about it with the co-founder of the program. This is Fallon. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Now, we, I want to explain to viewers the Black Restaurant Week for Houston happened in April, but the entire event continues through November, right? Correct. We're doing 15 campaigns this year. Actually, next week we start New York, so we'll be in the Big Apple, and then we're off to the West Coast. A great way to support black culinary businesses across the country. Our goal is to support over 1,000 businesses this year. It's so wonderful, and after a pandemic year like what we've had, I know a lot of local Houston restaurants are still benefiting from what you guys are doing, right? Correct. You can actually go to our website. It's set up like a directory. Find some barbecue restaurants to celebrate Juneteenth with, and um, definitely just keep supporting local businesses. I think a directory is exactly what I need because there are so many that I've wanted to try and it makes it so simple to find them that way, right? Correct. So you can visit our website, blackrestaurantweeks.com, and it has all the information and all of our Houston participants from this year. That's fabulous. Now, I do want to mention that you guys have a No Crumb Left Behind 2021 campaign. Tell us a little bit about that. It's really just helping businesses recover from the pandemic. A lot of businesses are struggling right now with labor shortages, still trying to get their feet wet with everything opening up. So we just want to be a blessing to all those businesses. 
businesses and, and really help them get some money back into their business. It's, it's such a wonderful thing. Thank you for all of that. So what I also want to talk about is a competition that is part of the Black Restaurant Week. Let's talk a little bit about the bartending competition. All right. It's one of our, our fun events. So we have the best black bartenders from all across the country, 16 different cities competing for title of best bartender. They win $5,000 cash. <laughs> so it's a beautiful competition. And so we're, we're super excited to kick that off soon. And if we're just going to move things on over, we've got a very special person here with us today, right? Yes. So Ed has actually won competitions in Houston. He's Atlanta, Dallas, um, he's definitely the, the person <laughs> to make you a drink. <laughs> he is the one defending his title this year, Ed Warner. Hey! Hey, how you doing? All right, so we're going to make something called the Minty today, the Minty. inspired by Harriet Tubman. Tell us how you came up with that. Okay, um, when uh, Fallon called me to ask him to do a mocktail, I wanted to think about Juneteenth. I wanted it to be red, refreshing, because we're usually out in the heat. So I came up with the Minty. The reason I call it the Minty because that was Harriet Tubman's, uh, Harriet Tubman's nickname. Okay. And so it just fell in line with the drink that I created. Okay, let's talk about the ingredients that we're going to use. Okay, so what we're going to start out with is some uh, fresh um, watermelon juice. Okay. Now you can, you can juice this in a juicer, in a Vitamix, or you could press it through a... Um, a strainer. That's totally natural, though. There's, there's nothing but watermelon juice. Okay. Um, here's some fresh lime juice. We got the lime juice coming in. All right. It's going to cut a little bit of that sweetness out, right? Right. Okay. The lime juice going in. Okay. And then I did a mint simple syrup, and I'm going to show you a simple way to do it. This is simple syrup, and I just took some of my mint and... I can smell that mint. It smells and so it fresh. Instead okay. of, you know, to get the oils out. Okay. And now I'm just stirring it. So there you go. Your homemade simple syrup. So it's a real easy way. This way you don't get any overcooking or any bitterness in the drink. Okay. And you're mixing it with the mint. That's so brilliant. And I'm going to just put that in there. And then to, I'm going to leave that in there. Okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm going to put this in there. Okay. What is that? Just more little mint leaves? mint leaves. And the reason I took the other one out is because mint stalks tend to be bitter. Okay. And we don't need that in our lives. Okay. And I'm going to stir that along with some... I see you've got the cut up watermelon pieces over watermelon here. Watermelon pieces. Okay. Just for a little, a little color. And you stir okay. that up. Get it all mixed in so that, you know, with the cover off, it attracts flies. But this way it attracts your guests. Okay. And then I'm going to top it with some lemon lime soda. Ed, is this the finished product right here? That is. All right, I'm going to go ahead and taste it for our viewers because I'm going to be the taste tester. Ready? Mmm. Mmm. If there is anything as refreshing as watermelon, I tell you what, a mocktail for the summer. This is the minty inspired by Harriet Tubman and also from the Ed Warner experience right here. If you guys want the full recipe, thank you so much. It is online at HoustonLife.tv. Still tons more to come from the kitchen a little bit later on in the show. Derek and Courtney, back to you guys. Okay, Lauren, can we order two, please, to the set outside? Can someone bring us those? Yes. <laughs> sure. That looks really so good. good. Especially on a day like today. I know. Fabulous. Great for the whole family. Thanks, Lauren. We'll see you in a bit. Coming up, how one local woman is using the power of performance to educate a generation. Plus, we will get a check of your forecast with Frank when Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. We are wandering Emancipation Park there. We have taken the show on the road. Derek and Courtney are back with you at 3.30. So many things to see and do. So many interesting people to meet around Emancipation Park today. Earlier, we asked you to send a shout out to a black owned business in Houston you want to recognize. The comments came pouring in. Here's some of what you had to say, starting with Karen. Karen says, Le Pam's House of Creole. Miss Pam is the friendliest hostess chef you'll ever meet. Listen, this is a time where you get out the notepad and pen and take notes because mm -hmm. everybody's got some really great ideas. 
Tracy writes in scrumptious Houston best cheesecake and cupcakes in the Bay Area. Oh, you know, oh I love my word. Cheesecake. Me Thanks, too. Tracy, for that. Mark writes in your mama's soul food on yes. Antoine. Great food and friendly service. Yes, all so good. Great ideas. And uh, McKessa writes in, I agree with this one too. TK charcuterie, hands down. She makes the best charcuterie boards or security boards, as my kids like to call them. Boxes, etc. You name it. By the way, TK, she's a boss babe. I mean, she is a NICU nurse uh, at MD Anderson and uh, great side business with those charcuterie boxes. Unbelievable and they're delicious. Very nice. Thanks for the recommendations. Keep them coming in. All right. We're going to check now in with Frank for a look at today's forecast. And Frank, I think I could sum it up in one word. Sticky. <laughs> yes. Or hot. <laughs> Humid. It is hot. I picked the place <laughs> to be. I'm in this really nice, just, uh, I'm in this nice sea breeze area, so uh, a breeze area, sort of a breezeway. In fact, the, there's a, the aquatic center is behind me here. And lo look at the guys playing some basketball. So you got that going. And um, I guess when you get hot and, and are finished playing basketball, you just go jump in the pool. So that's right next door. So, that's, so it's really kind of nice. And it is plenty hot. I'm here to tell you 92, 93. You know, yesterday we got to 96. Before that, every day's been at 98. So we are heading that way. It's still only 3.30. So I'm looking at 92, 93 degrees across the area right now. And if you look at the, the region, of course, even hotter in some spots. When your cool spot is Anahuac at 89, you know it's hot outside. So we've got 94s, 95s. Feels like numbers easily, again, 102 to 104 for a lot of us. And we're still watching that number because as we go into the next couple of days, it's going to get even hotter around here, it looks like. Uh, not much on exact track radar. There's a little cloud cover out here, so that always helps a bit, but not a lot. I'm looking at uh, maybe a sprinkle or two. So let's go down into the Bay of Campeche and the Gulf of Mexico. That is where we are finding that very broad circulation. The National Hurricane Center indicating this is going to be upgraded to a potential tropical cyclone development as we get toward 4 o'clock. So I'll have that at 4. But in the meantime, a lot of clouds, a lot of action as far as thunderstorms to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. Right now, it looks like all of that is going to continue to head to the north, and that means this weekend in Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, it's going to be a bit of a mess. For us, we're going to look for a fairly dry one. So coming up at 4, we're still talking about sizzle in the tropics. We'll talk about our Thursday evening. I'll tell you, it's going to be warm. And as we go into the weekend, that Gulf system we're going to continue to watch, but it looks like the weekend is going to be generally on the very warm side. But we'll talk more about it at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, hang in there. I've only, I only got three more hours out here, and then we're good to go. <laughs> and then you can take your plunge in the aquatic center. <laughs> there I you go. Wait. Thank you, Frank. We'll see you in just a bit. So the gift of storytelling is an art form that has the ability to entertain, educate, and even heal. Naomi Mitchell Carrier has been using her talents to teach a generation through powerful performances. Unbelievable. You know, from writing and composing the renowned historical musical, I Am Annie Mae, to founding the Texas Center for African American Living History, Naomi is helping to lead the charge to preserve Texas's black history and truly has no plans of slowing down. Well, the car started in 2007. But it dates back to 1995 when I began to do living history reenactments for the George Ranch Historical Park. And everything about our company is a derivative of the musical I Am Annie Mae, which I wrote with Ruth Weingarten back in 1987. Annie Mae Hunt told the story of her family over 150 years. So it's 150 years of black Texas history. And telling her story really helped me to understand the power of oral history, the power of living history reenactments. And because of that musical, my life has become one of being a storyteller. Finding the stories, documenting the stories, and then sharing the stories with the people. Most recently, I did four films for four Galveston women who had accomplished incredible uh, achievements. And I had a white man and his wife come up to me and say, you know, Naomi, before I came to this film screening, I knew this much about black history. He said, but 
after being here and listening to your stories, now I know this much. So I consider that measurable. That's quantitative, it's qualitative. And that is what we intend to do. 300,000 of the Texas enslaved had a lot to celebrate once they were emancipated, finally. Juneteenth is about emancipation, but what does that mean? It all comes down to how do we save this information and how do we teach? My self-appointed mission is to save a generation and leave a footprint. I do that via education. People will only respect and preserve what they love. They will only love what they understand. And they will only understand what they are taught. So my role in all of this is to teach and to heal. Amen. What a beautiful story. And I love her quote, she, to save a generation and to leave a footprint. That is so renowned, and I think it speaks so many volumes in today's world. She's such an inspiration. I'd love to hear her speak for a full hour. We do have a link to connect with Naomi on our website, HoustonLife.tv. We also should point out, Courtney, that because of COVID, the Emancipation Park Conservancy, they're doing things a little bit differently this year to commemorate Juneteenth. Visit their website, epconservancy.org. You can also check out the Emancipation Park uh, Facebook page and check out all the events, the virtual events they have lined up for the coming days. And also remember, we mentioned that food distribution that will be happening in person. Uh, compliments of our friends over at Shell. It's happening this Saturday. Just be sure you do register in advance. Absolutely. Also coming up, the creative ways our friends over at HEB are commemorating Juneteenth. It is so, so cool. Plus, we will check back in with Joe Sam to learn more about the landmarks around the park. That's when Houston Life returns. Don't go away. Well, welcome back. We showed you a little bit of video right before the break of this next story. And HEB came up with a very creative way to commemorate Juneteenth. And it was quite a team effort, several hours and very creative as well. Here with more on that is HEB's mission to be the change. Area Community Coordinator for HEB Buffalo Market and HEB Montrose Market, Lauren Chrislieb, and also HEB's Group Vice President of Public Affairs, Diversity and Environmental Affairs, Will Nell Heron. Great to see you, ladies. Thanks, thanks, to see thanks, you. Yeah. thanks so much for being here and, and braving the heat in this beautiful park. Well, now let me start with you first of all and talk about HEB's relationship with the Emancipation Park Conservancy Group because I understand this was a very big deal for HEB. Oh yeah, we've had a long-standing uh, partnership with Lucy Bremond and the team here at Emancipation Park. They do an incredible job of programming year-round, but most importantly when you think about Juneteenth, what better place to spend Juneteenth than in Emancipation Park right here in Houston? So it's a historical place and we're proud to be a, a partner. And this is so incredible. We're gonna, we have some video that we wanna share because Lauren, you took part in a mural that was here. And, and tell me a little bit about this because I understand that you're not a muralist and you've really never <laughs> done any of this before, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm an artist, but I've never done a chalk mural before. So it was definitely a task. It was really fun though um, and a learning experience for everybody. So um, yeah, it was an eight by eight, um, eight foot by eight foot mural that says Juneteenth and, um, and it's right in front of the Freedom Arch, so. And it's so great. You created this design, then layered it on that eight by eight grid. We're looking at some time-lapse video of the whole team <laughs> working on this. It basically uh, was replicated on the ground. This is um, in front of the Founders Arch near Hutchins Street. So um, it, it's, look at that. That's the finished Beautiful. product. What does it mean for you to be a part of something like this here, Lauren? Oh, it's just, it's really awesome to be able to be a part of something. So, I mean, it's just, a, it's a great location and, it's just Juneteenth. I was really excited whenever they asked us to come up with a design. And, um, and so I, I took that challenge and was like, yes, let's make something awesome and give back to the community and 
hopefully they enjoy it as much as we did. Right. Well, mission accomplished. I mean, it looks beautiful. And Winnell, this is really all about what HEB stands for. Yeah, HEB has a long-standing commitment to diversity and inclusion, and we really doubled down last year and launched our Be the Change initiative, which really embraces all Texans. And it's our personal commitment as a company to be a better employer, a better retailer, and community partner. And we've got a lot of great partners at HEB who have a tremendous amount of passion around this work. Uh, and so it's it's been fun to see how this has unfolded throughout the year for multiple groups, communities of color, women, LGBTQ+, veterans, disabled groups. So we're really looking at how do we continue to build that stronger emotional connection and make sure we're doing everything we can to drive real change. It really is incredible that the company stands for that because we are not cookie cutter by any stretch of the imagination. We can learn and grow from each other in such a beautiful way. And thank you both, Lauren and Winnell, for being here today. The artwork is great and the mission's even better. Thank you. So Thanks much. for having Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And of course, uh, for more information on HEB's Be the Change initiative, just visit our website. That's HoustonLife.tv. Okay, don't go anywhere. We're going to send things over to Lauren, who is standing by. Or, I'm sorry, Joe Sam. Sorry, Joe, I bumped you. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget about me, but you know what? We are not going to forget about the things that are happening here at Emancipation Park because it is absolutely beautiful. We're on the corner of Elgin and Emancipation. This is one of the corners, and at each corner of the park represents one of the founders. We are talking about the founder, Jack Yates, and I'm here with Lucy again to tell us about this amazing founder and this amazing monument that we have here of him because it's beautiful. There are four monuments. Uh, it encompasses all four corners of the park. We used to call them the four corners, but as you can see, these monuments are beautiful. They were led by Reginald Adams, and it, this is Jack Yates. It all started with him, but he went on to organize other churches. He started with Bethel Church, mm -hmm. other churches in Houston, and there's also a school in this community named after him, Reverend Jack Yates. It's Jack Yates High School, the same high school that George Floyd graduated from. Absolutely beautiful, and I also hear that each monument represents a type of element. We have earth, air, fire, and water. Jack Yates is the fire. Jack Yates is the fire because he ignited everything that happened because of Juneteenth, because of Emancipation Park, and we understand today is a great day, and his flames are still burning. It is. It's still and burning. We are so proud to be here because we've been all around the park. If you guys can already tell, we've been moving around, yeah, checking out the park, touring how beautiful it is. There's a space for every single person to come here and enjoy, and there's history that is spread throughout, so you can really learn about this park, Emancipation Park, what it means to Juneteenth, what it means to African American history, and why it's so important here in Texas. And we want you to come here. We want you to learn about the park. We want you to learn about Juneteenth. And when you leave here, we want you to spread the word, share, like, www.epconservancy.org or follow us on our social media platform, EP Conservancy, at EP Conservancy. Please do and share, like us, and tell the world about <laughs> Emancipation Park in Juneteenth. That's right. You have been absolutely wonderful, and I love all of the wisdom, the knowledge that you've had about this park here. You say 10 acres that we can really come and enjoy ourselves in. We see how beautiful the sun rising above our heads right now. Yes. That means that they're shining down on us right now. All of those founders are proud of what we're doing here, continuing to keep their legacy alive. They're smiling now, and they're, they're looking down, and they're smiling, and we hope to continue to perpetuate the rich history of this park. Next year, we'll be celebrating 150 years, so come back and see us, okay? Yeah, absolutely. All right. We're going to come back and see you guys every single day. That's how much we love the park here. Lucy, thanks so much for being Thank with you. us and sharing all of that information. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Courtney and Derek, I cannot tell you how proud I am of this park, Emancipation Park. I come here every single morning. I'm going to continue coming here every day because it is such a beautiful place to come and see. Oh, I agree with you, Joe. It's one of the best places in the city. Very nice. And Lucy Bremont, she works so hard as well. Joe, we'll see you in just a bit. Now let's check back in with Lauren Kelly, who is helping cook up a delicious recipe to commemorate Juneteenth. How's it going, Lauren? That's right, you guys. I'm here with a very special guest today. This is the winner of the Great Food Truck Race, Alaska. Chef DeAndrea Jacobs is here to show us two very simple recipes ahead of this special holiday. Look at this right here and right here. Houston Life returns in just two minutes. Come back with us. 
All right, y'all, we are now in the kitchen again for some food ahead of this very special holiday, uh, Juneteenth. I know that watermelon is consistently brought up and barbecue is consistently brought up. And Chef D, we've got Chef D. Ambria Jacobs here, who you probably recognize from the Food Network. Thanks for joining us of today. Of course, of course. And I look forward to showing you guys these two really great, easy recipes. And they're full of flavor and they're going to be healthy for you. I'm excited to hear all that because I might not be as good in the kitchen as one might think that I am. Probably not. But let's get started and show us how to make these that are going to be perfect for the whole family, right? Absolutely. Okay. So this is going to be a really easy, inexpensive dish. Okay. This is going to be our succotash salad. And I'm using corn that I've grilled okay. and some grilled watermelon. Oh. Now the grill marks are going to help bring out the flavor in the watermelon, increase the sweetness, and it's going to bring the texture down a little bit as well to mellow with the salad. Is this a tricky process? Do you have to specifically leave it on at a, at a, a right amount of time to grill a watermelon? I feel like you could possibly <laughs> screw that up, right? You can't. Honestly, you just want to cook it on a low temperature. Okay. Leave okay. it on your grill. That's one of those you can kind of set it and forget it. Okay. Some pieces okay. will caramelize more than others. Okay. And that's okay. Don't worry about the rind. We're not going to use it. So right. if it burns a little bit, you're good. Okay. So first, we're going to go ahead and dump our corn into All the right. bowl that I've already grilled. And you know what, D'Ambria, I love mm -hmm. this because it's so colorful, and they Absolutely. say that everything that's colorful is good for you, right? It is. This, um, this hits all your color points, and it's also the same colors for Juneteenth. So it okay. gives you that same okay. bright and festive feel. All right. So, so we're adding in, in some purple onion as well as some uh, cherry tomatoes. Okay. We've got some red bell pepper. All right. And you just simply chop these up into just, smaller pieces. Exactly, just a nice dice. If you have a chop you okay. can use something like that. Okay. And then some green onion and then green bell pepper. Okay. So once you add all of that in, you'll just toss. You want to toss yeah, for I'm me? Yeah, come toss. Yep, yep, yep. There you go. So just give it a nice little toss. I just have to be toss. really careful not to spill it all over the kitchen. That's usually why I got kicked out of it <laughs> in the first place. So you're going right. to toss that up. Okay. And then I'm going to also chop some watermelon for that okay. while you're tossing. Okay. And then we'll move into the dressing. Now, okay. the dressing is actually really, really simple. Um, something that you can make with all the things that you keep in your house. Okay. So I'm chopping the watermelon into similar size cubes as the rest of the items. Okay. So that way it just meshes and mixes together well. Chef D, this smells so good. Good. I know that oh, yeah. like the smell there of onions go. is potent, but like everything else oh, yeah. in there combined really is delicious. And it's it so is. Fabulous. And the watermelon is gonna add a really mm. nice sweet flavor to it, okay? It's such a great summer ingredient too. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So we've got that in there. So now we're gonna make our dressing. Okay. okay. Oh, like a homemade dressing. Exactly. Okay. So we're gonna take some olive oil, okay. rice wine, vinegar. All a right. little bit of honey, mustard, salt, pepper, and cayenne. That's, That's it. Simple. Simple. Okay. Things you keep in your house. All right. If you don't have rice wine vinegar, you could use whatever light vinegar you have. So you could also use something like a regular traditional vinegar. Okay. That okay. was the honey, right? That was the honey. Okay. Nice hefty uh, pinch of salt because it is a lot of salad mix. Okay. Um, we're going to add in a little bit of mustard. Okay. Nice and you can just food. eyeball it, right? It's, it depends on your flavor palette, right? Can, you of. can. The salt, especially the salt and the spice levels, okay. you can okay. eyeball because you just want to make sure that they work for you. Okay. So we'll give that a nice little whisk. So you get a nice little... How did I do on, on mixing I think that day. looks great, girl. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. And then right. we'll just pour that right on in. And then okay. can I mix that up? And then you're going to toss away. Okay. I'm now, that, that looks gorgeous. It sure does. Now, we also have our oven baked chicken. Okay. So this oven baked chicken is great if you don't have a barbecue pit, you're in Houston, you live in an apartment or something like that. Right, right. So this has a really simple, easy marinade. I've okay. got some chicken quarters. We're going to go ahead and just throw those right into the bowl. Okay. Um, and quarters why as opposed from other sizes. And well, these are great ones. for people that don't cook often okay. because you can't really mess up a quarter. Like a okay. chicken breast is going to dry out really quickly mm -hmm. and we don't want that to happen. Okay. All right. So this is great to marinate, honestly, overnight or four hours. You could do this ahead of time. Okay. But I add in some apple cider vinegar. Okay. We're going to add in some liquid smoke. So this is going to give you that fake grill Ooh, feel that secrets, you're looking for. Tricks of the exactly. Trade. Okay. And then we'll add in a little touch of mustard More as well. Mustard, okay. So that's why I said it's nice because it's repetitive as well in a sense. Right. Well, you're, you're using the vinegar in the same ingredients. Exactly. You have out. Okay. And then you'll want to add some Worcestershire sauce. Okay. Okay. So that's all you need for the marinade. Okay. And you'll just get in there and get it all nice and mixed together. I don't want to get my fingers dirty today. Because <laughs> the nails look too good, girl. <laughs> there you go. So, well, but you'll mix that all together, okay. and then once you mix it together. I use um, my seasoning blend, which is never bland, our barbecue rub. Okay. However, you can use whatever barbecue rub you have at home or that you get at your local grocery and store. And we can find that in your very special catering service online, right? You can. It's okay. sophisticateddelights.com. You can purchase that. And then once you do that, this is your finished product. You'll oh. put it on a sheet pan, <laughs> okay. you'll get it in your oven, and look at how good that barbecue looks. And Chef. what's nice oh. about it 
is that the barbecue rub gets to stick on top of it. It yes. gets crusty. And that's so the stuff that gets stuck in your teeth. teeth you mouth. want it. Yes. Yes. I'm the Jeff DeAmory Jacobs. Thank you so much. Congratulations on your win for Thank Food you. Network's Great Food Trick Race in Alaska. Alaska! I know, right? Guys, he's back in Texas, though. Derek and Courtney, we have got some learning to how to make this chicken. I'm going to bring it back to the studio, but I'm sending it back to you guys for now. Oh, my gosh. It looks delicious. Thanks for sharing, Lauren. Something tells me you can do it. She's got a Absolutely. great personality, too. Mm -hmm. Looks good. All right. After the break, a look at what is coming up on tomorrow's show, including a pretty special way we are honoring the dads of KPRC2. Houston Life will be right back. I'm here. Tomorrow on Houston Life, we are sharing some advice and memorable moments from some of the dads of KPRC2 ahead of Father's Day. Very nice. And pack your bags for the great outdoors, maybe your tent as well. We're going to show you five fun camping experiences you can have right around the I Houston area. Isn't that cool? I know. And something else that's really cool is the fact that we were at Emancipation Park for the entire hour of Houston Life. <laughs> that's true. In full suits, no less. I highly recommend. Or a dress. <laughs> <laughs> some athletic gear, <laughs> working out in the park. It's a beautiful place to hang out. And of course, uh, the rich history makes it all even better. Absolutely. It's a beautiful spot. Hopefully you can get out here to Emancipation Park. Of course, there's the food distribution that's happening in person. Yes, on Saturday. On Saturday. Compliments of our friends at Shell. If you want to learn more, you can always visit the Emancipation Park Conservancy website, which is epconservancy.org. You can also visit their Facebook page to keep up with their calendar of events, including all those virtual things happening for the next few days in honor of Juneteenth. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us on this Thursday. We're going to send things over now to the desk. Sounds good. Keith and Chris.